Greetings and salutations. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. My name is Eric Moss. I'm a personal trainer, motivational speaker, and a modern day performing strongman. If you're unfamiliar with what a modern day performing strongman is, picture the old time performing strongman, legends like the mighty Adam and Alexander Zass. They would perform feats of strength as part of a live show. I do a similar thing, but with a modern day twist. Some of the feats of strength I've performed in front of a live audience include things like bending steel bars, breaking chains with my chest, twisting horseshoes, rolling up frying pans, driving nails through wooden boards by hand, and even holding back a high performance motorcycle while taking off at full throttle. Now, being a modern day performing strongman and the fact that there's not a whole lot of us around these days to answer questions, in an effort to grow my YouTube channel by giving you guys what you want, I started a YouTube series called Ask Eric Moss, where I would invite you to ask me a question by dropping it in the comments below. And when you do that, I try to get back to you with your very own custom video just for you. Pretty cool, right? So this question comes from someone named Trump Drago 517 and they asked, Hey, what about using heavy fitness bands for isometrics? Thank you for asking that. <clears throat> now, one of the things is a lot of times our training styles are created from things that we're just naturally drawn to. And I have naturally been drawn to iron. I like heavy weights. I like the way kettlebells look because it looks like something that you'd find in a dungeon. And I'm not that big of a fan of fitness bands, partially because they don't have that hardcore feel to me. Having said that, theoretically, it could be used, but I think it would be pretty difficult to use it for the purposes of isometrics. <clears throat> partially being that with, with bands, and this is one of the other reasons I don't tend to use it in my programming, it's hard to be specific with a certain level of resistance. So as an example, if you are lifting a 16 kilogram kettlebell, 16 kilograms is always 16 kilograms. If you're doing a 300 pound deadlift, 300 pounds is always 300 pounds. With a, a heavy fitness band or basically any elastic band in general, the amount of resistance is gonna be dependent on how long uh, the, uh, how uh, much extension you're pushing on that band. Now, one of the other things with, isom with uh, heavy bands is if you are using it for overcoming isometrics, you're going to be pushing it, and as you're getting stronger, it's going to elongate farther, which is going to provide more resistance. And that could be useful in that the majority of the strength gains that come from isometrics is going to be very specific to the joint angle. In which case, with heavy fitness bands, um, it's going to be translating a bit more. Uh, one of the other caveats on that is everything that you're doing as far as like training-wise has to be within the context of a goal. So I have to ask you, what is the goal? Is the goal to be able to perform feats of strength like I do, as in bending steel and breaking chains and stuff like that? Or is it to just get generally stronger? And if you get generally stronger, how do you define strength? What sort of things are important to you? I question how much of a carryover training with bands is going to have towards feats of strength, particularly if you're going to be doing things like pressing. It's going to be pulling you off balance if you're going to be using any kind of significant resistance if you have a high level of strength relative to your body weight. Um, and as far as like performing the feats of strength like I do, I don't know if the gains that you're gonna get are going to transfer to bending steel. The best thing that I've found that's gonna transfer to bending steel is bending steel or attempting to bend steel, which is how I use overcoming isometrics for the most part. Now for things like curls, I use it in place of dynamic weights, just because dynamic weights make my elbows complain and I wanted to be able to have a lot of strength in those ranges because I do use that 
uh, with bending steel. Um, trying to think, is there anything else that I'm leaving out? Um, oh yeah, a lot of times also with the weak point of certain lifts, it's going to happen where the, the uh, joint angle is around 90 degrees in relation to gravity, in which case the majority of, if you're doing curls with an elastic band, the majority of the resistance is going to happen up here when your elbow is almost underneath of your wrist, which is going to limit the amount of potential strength that you're going to build within the biceps. Meanwhile, building it here or here would transfer to doing a curl type movement, but preferably here. This is where I generally perform my isometric curls either with an ISO chain or with a similar device using a chain, which I'll talk about probably in a future video. But in the meantime, I hope that answers your question. If anybody else has any questions or comments or anything like that, drop it in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you with your very own custom video. And if you like this, let me know by hitting that like button if you wanna see more of this sort of thing or you wanna see the, the chronicles from my various performances, subscribe to the channel and of course, if you think anybody should see this, please share it with them. You know how this YouTube thing works. It's not rocket science. But in the meantime, please stay happy, healthy, and strong. Eric Moss, over and out.